Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the Hide, and welcome back to the Baseball Hide. Hope you like this video and subscribe. Uh, I would ask you a couple of things. One thing in the beginning of this video and something else at the end of this video, nothing big. But in the beginning of this video, I'm going to tell you that I need you to sub to the Baseball Hut too. And a very specific reason. If the Braves lose tonight, folks. If the Braves lose tonight to the Philadelphia Phillies. I will create a roast. A bonfire the likes of which you've never seen. Making fun of the Braves and their f scumbag fans. And when that happens, oh, ho, ho, you don't know. But you're going you're gonna to yuck it up and have a lot of fun. So I'll put the link in the description of this video. Okay, here we go. Now that we got that out of the way, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit, folks. Chomping at the bit to get that done. So here we go. Steve Cohen, he had, I guess they had some kind of conference. And he was talking about what he wants to do with the Mets. Now, as you know, he's owned the team three years. Um, the first year was up and then it was down. Uh, the first year he he went through two general managers. The first general manager, remember Jared Porter? Ding 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 ding. ding. You know, he had Jared Porter. Then he had um, uh, Zach Scott. You know Zach Scott. You know he's drinking and driving. But then he got out of it. Mets got rid of him. Got rid of Jared Porter. Then they brought in uh, Billy Epler. But that first year, uh, the first half, uh, they were in first place. They were in first place most of that season. And they had an injury to Jacob DeGrom right before the All-Star break. And then when they came back after the All-Star break, they had lost their shortstop, Francisco Lindor, who was really a key defensive player. I didn't realize how great of a defensive player he is. And that's one of the things I learned about him that first year. And those two losses made the Mets basically uh, collapse under their own weight. They burned Javi Baez, but Baez was not suited for New York. And he was a bad influence in that clubhouse and a bad influence on Lindor to where they were doing the thumbs down. And that basically got him out of here uh, because he was the main culprit behind that. And then last year, now they were in first place. But the, the you know, but but as you know, the infrastructure here is still part of the Will Pond's legacy, which is what that first year was. The second year, Steve Cohen was able to own the team. The Mets were in first place most of the season. And they finished in first. They were tied with the Braves. Only on a technicality that the Braves uh, won the division. Now, I'm very suspicious of the Braves and all the nonsense that's gone over on there the last two years. I'm not going to talk about it here. I talk about a lot of that on the baseball hit, too. And I'll talk about that in a video I'm going to roast with them if they lose tonight. But uh, they've had 101 wins. The second most wins they've ever had in the history of this franchise. Uh, more than the 69 team, more than the 88 team, and only the 86 team had that many wins. So, you know, obviously not uh, winning the division, and obviously losing to the Padres in, in three games uh, was a disappointment. We know that's a disappointment. Every, I'm so very disappointed about that team last year. Um, now this year, the expectations were very high. They were essentially coming back to the same team. They replaced uh, Jacob DeGrom with Justin Verlander. We had Max Scherzer come back, but the beginning of the season, they lost Edwin Diaz, which was probably the the omen to everybody that this was going to be a bad year. And it was. They Not only did they lose a, a key guy at the end of the game, but they also lost a leader in the clubhouse. Uh, if you come from where he came from here to being one of the best players and, and on the team, he was their best player last year. And not having him at all this year, that's and that's gonna that's gonna kill you, and that's exactly what happened. Now, obviously, the, and now we, we're going through a new general manager, Billy Epler is now he resigned, and now we have a new base president of baseball operations, David Stearns, which for three years Cohen has been kind of waiting for him to be available. You wait three years for him. Yeah, that's a long time, long time to wait for somebody. But I have some quotes here from a uh, thing that he was at, I guess. Uh, let's see. Where was he at? I have it over here. Uh, let's see. He was at a conference. Well, it doesn't matter, but he put out a bunch of quotes. He's been interviewed on a, on a day, uh, you know, from somebody. 
Uh, this is what he said, talking about uh, David Stern and David Stearns and the Mets. It's about this is from oh okay he's at a conference yesterday a Sportico invest in sports. He said this I was really patient about Stearns and I think that was the right move. I've got to get the Mets right. Once I get the Mets right and get the model down, I can think about doing something else. I've got to get this right, and I haven't gotten it right yet. He's talking about in this this context of, of buying other sports teams, but that's that's the big uh, takeaway. So I've got to get the Mets right, and what he means is, is have a sustained winner every year. And I would mention I've been saying this for quite a while, uh, and that is um, he has to get rid of more of the well pond people, get them all out of here. So that the well ponds that are here will not feel welcome in this organization. Uh, he continued, I've had one good season and this year didn't pan out the way we hoped. It's still brick by brick. There's a lot of good things going on behind the scenes that will pay off down the road. Now you know that he has spent a lot of money. He's invested a lot of money. We know that he that he bought a pitching machine. Which mimics the pitches of the, player, of the pitchers that uh, come in that are going to like start that day. I think they keep that in the uh, in the batting cage. The batting cage is under the city field. But that was something that that's an investment. Obviously, now they have a pitching lab in, in St. Lucie, in Port St. Lucie with, with the team, and a lot of the minor league players have been going there. We've seen major results with some of the minor league players. I mentioned, uh, I'll put, of course, i put the link in the description of the prospect side so you can learn about the prospects. But uh, he is investing a lot of money into this team, not just uh, the payroll. And they were able to obviously turn stuff around and trade these veterans. They trade Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander. The people were saying the Mets were crazy. But the, people were writing me saying, oh, they couldn't do that. How could they do that? Well, they did it. He didn't have a problem. Let me read you what he said. Uh, and when asking him, was it a hard decision? That was a hard decision. Actually, it wasn't. It was a clear decision. I was patient. I was waiting for the team to demonstrate some consistency. We went three or four in a row, and then we lose three or four in a row. We never really got it going. I think at the particular time, our odds were like 15% to get into the postseason. Uh, and he talks about Verlander. Look what Justin Verlander has done for Houston. He's pitched great. There's an example where I was looking at the inter intermediate, intermediate long term, and they were and they were they were thinking short term. How could they get into the playoffs and advance in the playoffs? So I would argue I was arbitraging different time frames, and I bet if you called uh, Astros owner Jim Crane today, he's thrilled and I'm thrilled. That's great. So, you know, now now he's been talking about different things. He doesn't matter about this other stuff. He's talking about uh, having, like, video game contests at City Field. He's, you know, he's a very uh, different kind of caddy. He, looks, he looks, looks at things very differently than most of these owners, and uh, that's why the ownership... And Major League Baseball don't like him. Because he's very much outside of their world. Outside of their worldview. In a lot of ways. But uh, I do have a lot of confidence in him. Because he's been very successful in his other business. And he's not afraid to take risks. I mean, you know, bringing in <coughs> the second year. You know, signing all these veteran players. And they won 101 games. It didn't. They didn't, they didn't win. And we saw last year... That third wild card in the National League went to the postseason in the Phillies. We see right now the Arizona Diamondbacks have 84 wins. Have 84 wins. And they're going to the NLCS. They're waiting for the Phillies or the Braves to win that series. But again, it's a crapshoot. I think I think the 84 wins is like the second fewest wins for any team in, in the League Championship Series. I think the 73 Mets with the, with the lowest number of wins. So it'll be interesting to see if they get there. Oh, that'd be a great World Series, wouldn't it? The, Di the Diamondbacks versus the Astros or, or the Rangers? Oof. <laughs> that is not... I mean, if anything, you'd like to see a rematch of last year's World Series. You know, do we really want to see the Braves? No. F the Braves. And F uh, their fans. But, you know, the Mets are on the right track. They have a good owner. He knows how to win. I mean, he knows how to put a winning system in. It's just, can he do it uh, with a very impatient fan base and a very insane uh, media here? Uh, on the Baseball Hut, too, I talked about how uh, Greg Giannotti 
After four days on the job, he wants to see David Stearns get fired. He's already talking about him getting fired. And already wants to see uh, Pete Alonso get traded. But um, I have great faith in his owner because he did a good... No Met team has ever won 100 games with an owner in the second year. The original owner took her nine years, eight years, to win 100 games. It took the second ownership group six years. The third ownership group never did 100 wins. That was the Wilpons. And obviously, in the second year with Cohen, he did it in the second year, won 100 games. Unbelievable. And that should that should tell you something. You don't dismiss 101 wins, especially for a team that was older and not a team that has a stronger foundation than the one they're trying to build. Well, you let me know about what you think about this video. But before I leave... I have another another channel. I have so many channels. It's called the Football Hut. Well, <laughs> pretty obvious. I do a lot of Giants stuff, a lot of New York Giants stuff here. I do a lot of my Giants. But because they're bad, I mean really bad, I'm doing a lot of different things. A lot of WFAN stuff. Because this is so crazy. And people love it. And get so many views on it. Um, you might like it. So I'll put the link into the football hut into the description of this video and, and go in and check it out. It's all the teams. So even if you're not a Giants fan, you're a Jets fan, whatever, just go in there and subscribe. I'll do some team at some point in the near future. So thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the baseball hut. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.